find the Laplace of, of little f of t, so solution. So that's the question. It's a piecewise one. Hey, you're back! Oh. To find Laplace. So as before, we start by using the definition. So just take the Laplace of f of t, like this. And this is equal to the improper integral from 0 to infinity. So 0 to infinity. And then we have e to the negative st, f of t, right? That's a, a cursive, cursive s, cursive s. So that's the definition you use every time. So if it wasn't a piecewise function, you would just plug it in. So if it was like t squared, you would, you would just put a t squared here. Maybe we'll do one later today where it's like that, just because we have time, I think. Okay, we have time. So now we have to break it up because it is a piecewise function. So between 0 and pi, it's going to be cosine. Okay, so this will be equal to, so from 0 to pi, it's e to the negative st, and then it's just cosine t dt. So from 0 to pi, we replace f with the cosine function. Okay, we replace f with the cosine function. And then, just to be complete, the second piece is going to go from, from where to where? Anyone know? Where, where, where is pi, pi to infinity, very good. Pi to infinity. Oh, that's why it's so hard, okay. Well, this makes it easier, actually, this piece here. This is gonna go away, uh, Duncan, because in this case, F, hey, oh, I feel like I haven't seen you in a while. Were you here last time or no? Uh, what's this? No, <laughs> no, 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 I'm not even sure. So zero dt. Zero dt. So this is going to be zero. This is going to be zero. So well, we'll talk about this in a minute. So any questions up to here? We have we have time. We have time. So I can walk away and I'm not in it. It's perfect. I can come over here. I can do anything. <laughs> Free. <laughs> any questions? Any questions on the steps? So we're just applied the definition. So from zero to pi, it's cosine. From pi to infinity, it's, it's zero. So from zero to pi, f of t is cosine, so we replace that with cosine. And then from pi to infinity, that, that comes from this, f of t is zero, so we replace f of t with zero. That's how we got the zero there. Yes, Ryan? There was one question on the homework, but like the bounds were, I forget what they were like from one to one. In that case, would it just be like a regular <coughs> Yeah, I think you're saying so it was just like two numbers. Yes, that would just be a regular integral. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you wouldn't have, like in this case here, 0 to pi is just going to be, there's no infinity here. Yeah. Let's, let's handle this on the side. Uh, I'll do it up here. So this times this is going to be 0 when you multiply these. So just up here, I'll just talk about it. So we're going to get pi to infinity, 0 dt. And I think we talked about this last time. When you integrate zero, what do you get? Do you remember? A, a constant, a constant. And, and then you have the limits of integration, so you subtract the constant, so you just get zero. Do you want to see the work again for it, or? No, maybe I'll do it anyways. So limit b goes to infinity, you do this. And when you integrate zero, you get a constant, so you have this, pi to b. That looks pretty hardcore. So we integrated zero, we got a constant, um, we replace the infinity with the letter b. b is approaching infinity. Wow, it's a lot of notation. That's pretty hardcore. You plug in the b, and you just get c. Because there's nothing to plug in, you just get the constant. And then you subtract, and then you plug in the pi, and you get c. So c minus c is 0, so we get the limit. As b goes to infinity of 0, so we just get 0. So, so this whole piece is gone. This whole piece is gone. Bye bye. All right, I'm going to write this again over here. So we have the Laplace of f of t, and this is equal to this definite integral from 0 to pi, e to the negative st, cosine t, dt. And it looks like you can't tabulate that because it's <clears throat> Right. So. Yeah, you can't. Correct. You can't really use tabular. Now, some people would argue that, oh, you can always use tabular. It's true, you can, but it becomes uncomfortable and it's not fun. Um, typically, you use tabular, when, what was Duncan's implying, when one of the pieces is eventually zero. So, any questions on any of the steps? This is probably the hardest homework problem, so, gotta make it count. 
Okay, so there's a bunch of ways to do this. I've seen people do it different ways. Personally, I like to ignore the limits of integration, do the indefinite integral, and then at the end come back and plug in the limits, just so we don't have to worry about them and keep track of them as we go through the problem. So let's just focus on the indefinite integral for now. So I'm gonna leave some room here so that when I come back, I can finish the problem. So I think I'll start it here. So I'm gonna call this i. So i is equal to the integral of e to the negative st cosine t dt. The reason I called it i is because what's gonna happen is we're gonna use parts twice and this integral is gonna appear again. This is, I call this the looper, I made up the name. I don't know if it really has a name, but we use parts twice and you end up with the same answer. Then you end up solving for i and, and you get the answer. So when we use parts, we have to pick a u and a dv. I don't know if you remember the parts formula. It was u dv is equal to, the integral of u dv is uv minus the integral of v du. That's the integration by parts formula. So we're gonna use it two times. So it doesn't matter which one you call u, but you have to be consistent. So like if you let u be the exponential function, when you do parts the second time, you also have to let it be the exponential function. If you let u be the trig function, when you do parts the second time, you have to let u be the trig function. I learned that because the first time I taught Calc 2, this girl raised her hand and told me and caught my, she's like, oh, don't do that. I'm like, oh, okay. I personally think it's better to differentiate trig functions. So I'm gonna call u cosine. So u is gonna be cosine t. And then dv is what's left over when you're using parts. So dv is e to the negative st. And then there's something missing here. What are you supposed to put? dt, very good, dt. I've messed that up, people mess that up. Just be careful. The dv always has the dt part. Good, Kyle, good. So now let's take the derivative. So. The derivative of cosine, is it, is it sine or is it negative sine? Negative. negative sine, good, negative sine. So du is gonna be negative sine t. And then I'm thinking, now I'm hearing Kyle's voice, dt. <laughs> dt, yep. When we integrate the dv, the dt and the dv go away and we just divide by the negative s, just like before, like when we were doing tabular last time. So v is equal to negative one over s e to the negative st. I'm sorry I'm running small, I'm trying to make it all fit. This is gonna get crazy, so it's gonna get crazy. So we've used parts. I'm gonna put this in parentheses to kind of like separate it. Kind of fun, kind of a fun problem. So far it's feeling easier, but I know it gets a lot messier. Any questions, any questions on this one? Do you all remember this one from Calc 2? Anyone remember it a little bit? Yeah, yeah. Mike, yeah, yeah. How'd I get this? Oh, we divide by negative s. Yeah, let me explain why. Um, so like, let's say, uh, Gerardo, that you had like e to the 2x dx. It's a good question. When you would integrate this, you would just divide by two, right? Because you would make a u substitution. So you'd get e to the 2x over two plus c. Because you let u equal 2x, du is two dx. And then so one half du is dx. And then so when you substitute it in, your dx is one half du. So you get one half e to the u du, which is, oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know why I did it all, but why not? So, but that's why, it's worth it, it's worth it, it's worth it. It's good, it's good to go over it. A couple people weren't here last time also. And no, it's good, it's good, it's worth it, worth it. Yep. Any other questions so far on this one? Okay, so now we're gonna use the formula. So I'm gonna be really careful. So it's uv, uv, so it's gonna be, um, uv, so I'm gonna draw an arrow, uv. So I'm gonna put this one first. So it'll be negative one over s, e to the negative st, so it's uv, and then cosine t, cosine t. So that's just the uv part, okay? So uv, 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 minus the integral of v du. So these will become positive, so you are gonna get a minus. So it'd be minus, and the integral of VDU is just gonna be these. I'm gonna leave the constant in because if you leave it in the first time and you take it out the second time, it makes it easier. If you're wondering how I know that, it's because I've done this problem. So, and I'm writing it in the wrong place. That's really bad. I should be writing it here, right? Sorry about that, yeah. There's, there's two. 
There's two. Yeah, anyways, I'm gonna, I'm, I, wish I, I wish I had like a copy paste function like, um, that I can use in real life, but I don't. So um, we're, not, we're not there yet. Someday, maybe in 50 years or 100 years, but we'll all be gone by then, so that's no good. Cool. Unless like, huh, what's that? <laughs> Coronavirus? I hope not. Oh, God, no, yeah, no, that's, yeah. Oh, scary. Starting to sweat now. All right, so this is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is it really? Well, fever. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I hate getting sick. Any, any flu is really bad, so. Mm -hmm. I had the flu like a year and a half ago. It was horrible. I was teaching. Oh, so bad. Should have stayed home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I never miss class. If I miss class, something happened. Shouldn't say that, but like, <laughs> I broke down, there was a flat tire, like something like, you know, something that's it's bad, you know, it's something. You show up to class for your coronavirus? Well, yeah, I usually never miss class, like, I, ever, like, so usually something's got to be, like, pretty, pretty bad. Any questions up to here? Any questions up to here? Okay, so now we got to do it again, right? We have to do it again, so we have to use parts again. So... Which one do we need to let u be? The exponential or the trig function? The trig, the trig. yeah. Because if you, apparently, if you let it be the exponential one, it's like a death loop. You'll just, it, it won't work. Like, it just fails. Why? I don't know. So u is going to be sine. And then dv is what's uh, left over. So dv is going to be 1 over s. It's already getting harder. It's just more notation e to the negative st dt. Yeah, see, it's already messier. Yeah, this is the problem that I gave to a Calc 2 class years ago was extra credit, and no one got it right. It was just too much for you know, a Calc 2 student to do. You might say, oh, Calc 2, they know this, but no. It's, the s's make it way harder. Right? Throw in that s and it's game over. Differentiating sine, we get cosine. So cosine t dt. Integrating this, we get v equals negative 1 over s squared e to the negative st. The squared comes from the s times the s, right? s times s is s squared. This is good that there's room here. We're doing one line. Makes it easier. Put this, no. Oh. Any, any questions on any steps at all? I'm surprised I haven't messed up yet. Well, I kind of did up here, but not really. I mean, I just moved it. Let's do it again. So this is equal to, so I'm just going to take this piece and write it down first. Let's put it over here. So negative 1 over s, e to the negative st, cosine t. And I'm not going to skip any steps in this piece here. So minus and then bracket. So I'm just going to put brackets on what we do here to emphasize that now we're going to use the parts formula. So this is going to go here, OK? OK, so this is going to go here. So let's see. So it's uv, uv, so this times this. I'm going to put the, the e in the front. e to the negative st sine t, okay, minus the integral of v du. But there's, there's already a minus here, so it should become plus. Yeah, it should become plus. Okay, because this is minus and then times these. So it'll be plus. So plus. Now I'm going to pull the constant out and say, why? Because it'll make it easier. If you're wondering how I know that, it's just because I know. Just from doing it. Is this going to be a function where we have to divide by i? Hmm? Is this going to be a function where we have i in terms of itself? Yes, exactly. We're just basically going to have i in terms of itself. So you do remember these out though from, from Calc 2? Yes, I do. Yes, yeah, you didn't like them. <laughs> no, the way you said it. No, it's great. Yeah, no. Yeah, I, I think they're really cool. There's another way of doing it. I looked it up on the internet, and there's a video on the internet. This guy has one, Math Dr. Bob. But I never watched his video, and I never read the Wikipedia entry. So. But th there's another way. So I think it's harder. So I started to read it. I'm like, this is too confusing. Let's do something else. So we did it here. So we're good. So we're good. Any, any questions? Now we're going to clean it up. Oh, look! It's there, Hidalgo. It's right there. Look, I just saw it right there. That is I. That's I. See it? I. That's what we started with. It's the same thing. Same thing. It's beautiful. This is so nice. This is so good. So I'm going to come here and write it. So we have I equal to this. So it's this, negative 1 over s, e to the negative st, cosine t. Plus, plus because I 
is equal to this plus 1 over s squared e to the negative st sine t minus, 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 and I'll go over it again, no worries, 1 over s squared i. Let me go over that again. So i is equal to this, and then... Wouldn't it be 1 over s squared i? It is. Plus, sorry, positive, not negative. It's minus. Good question. <laughs> negative distributes. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's good to ask. It's really tricky. If you, if, like, if, you, if you were to mess up on something like this, you get tons of partial credit. It's so easy to mess up on these. I, I, like, I totally get it. I've messed up multiple times on these. It's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, in some classes, in some differential, in some engineering classes and differential equations classes, you'll have a formula for the Laplace of cosine. Like they'll give it to you, and you can use it on the test. It's just our book doesn't have it, but some textbooks do. Okay, so now we have to solve for i. Any other questions? Yes. How can you define i and then have i in the? Yeah, it's, it just happens. Okay. Yeah, it's like if you have like x equals three plus x. Oh, that doesn't make any sense. Okay, um, 2x. <laughs> right, x appears twice. Okay. And you can solve for x and you would get negative 3. Mm -hmm. Good question. Good, uh, Michelle. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Good, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> any other questions? Any other questions? I can walk away. It's not following me. So we got to solve for i. So let's add this to both, to both sides. So this is where it's going to get a little bit nasty, but we, we, can, we, can, we, can, we can handle it. This is differential equations. We can do anything. So I have to add these. So this, this addition is not that bad. I feel like I should do it on the side somewhere. Um, so we're basically adding this to this. So I'll do it up here. If you have i plus 1 over s squared i, okay, what you can do with this is you can write this as s squared over s squared i plus 1 over s squared i. I don't know if that's the best way to explain it. Then you can factor out the i and you get this. So a bunch of ways to show the work. Um, maybe you can, another way to do it maybe would be to write it like this. Maybe this is a better explanation. And then you write it as s squared over s squared, and then that turns into that. Maybe that makes a little more sense. Yeah, it makes more sense. s squared over s squared, and then s squared plus 1 over s. So, so this, this piece here is going to become this. And so this is equal to uh, this stuff over here. So negative 1 over s, e to the negative st. This is a beautiful problem. Cosine t. I'm loving it. Plus, it's like McDonald's, 1 over s squared. Isn't that the McDonald's thing? I'm loving it. At one point or another, I don't know if it still is. I haven't seen a McDonald's commercial in a while. I watch a lot of commercials because um, I have Hulu. Yeah. Can you also multiply them by s squared to simplify? Yeah, now we'll do that. Yeah. Oh, you mean up here? Yeah, we could have done that. Absolutely. That would probably would have been a little bit cleaner, Aislinn. Good, good. Yeah, Aislinn has some words of wisdom. She was saying that when we got here, it would have been a little bit cleaner to multiply by s squared. That could have worked too. And we'll do it now anyways, but that would have been good. Notice there's no plus c. Don't worry about it until the end. I'll wait because I'm seeing people writing. It's a lot to write. It's a lot to write. Yeah, Hulu has commercials. So, yeah. A lot of Peloton commercials. I love the Peloton commercials. I would never buy one, but it's like so cool. It's like, yeah. Have them all memorized. Okay, so let's multiply by the reciprocal. So s squared over s squared plus 1. So i is equal to, so multiplying by this, I think we could do it in our head, right? So we're multiplying by s squared over s squared plus 1. So one of the s's will cancel. So we'll be left with negative s over s squared plus 1, e to the negative st cosine t. So I did it in my head. So basically, we're multiplying by this. So we're mult by, I'll write it here maybe so you can see how to do it in your head. So if you're multiplying by this, you lose an s here. You see it? Okay. And then same thing here, except this time you lose all, all, both s's. You lose both copies of s. So you're left with 1 over s squared plus 1, e to the negative st sine t. And don't worry about the plus c. You can put it, 
but if you don't put it, I won't mark it wrong because what we have to do anyways is go to the definite one anyways, right? But you know what? I'm, gonna, I'm not going to put it. I'm purposely going to omit the plus C. Let's be bad. I'm going to put this in a box. So that's, that's a huge accomplishment. Duncan, hey! Time to go to bed. Well, late? Me too. I was up late. Yeah, really late. Later than usual. Yep. Mm -hmm. Any, any questions on, on this one? I was up way too late. Anyone like this problem so far besides me? I feel like it's kind of, yeah, me too. I am, I am like really, I thought it was gonna be so much hard, I guess because I haven't messed up yet, but, or yet, but there's no yet. Uh, I thought it was gonna be much more challenging. Um, so let's, let's go here and, and do the, the, the limits. So basically I'm gonna come back here and then just, we have, to, we have to do this, we have to put the bar here and do the zero and, and the pi, right? That's basically what we have to do, okay? So which one do we plug in first, the pi or the zero? Pi. The pi. So I'm just gonna go ahead and plug it in, if that's okay, so, so just to save the time. So let's plug in the pi. So we're plugging in the pi. I'm, I should erase this, I will in a minute. So it's gonna be, oh yuck, cosine of pi is negative one, but there's already a negative here, so it's gonna be positive, right? So it'll be s, S. Does it make sense? It's pretty deep. No, it just took me a second to realize that none of what we just did was Laplace transforms, and now we're finally doing Laplace. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know. It's like, what are we even doing? <laughs> we're graphing. No, I'm kidding. No, no. There's no graph. <laughs> so, so, so cosine of pi. Yeah, we're gonna graph the solution. No, I'm kidding. So cosine of pi is negative one. So it'll be S. Yeah, that's how you know the problem is long. Like when you, all of a sudden you get to the end, you're like, what are we even doing? Like, that happens to me a lot. Uh, this is e to the negative s pi. Look how epic that looks. There were some graphs on the like that. Yeah, that looks like ancient and mystical. Let's just look, oh! Anything with a pi, e to the negative s pi, like what is that? Sine of pi is zero, so that goes away. So we're good, so it's, so, it's, so it's plus zero, so I won't write it. So I'm skipping some steps. We plugged in pi, this became negative, and we got that. Plug in pi here, it goes away. I, I should write it, let me not be lazy. So you see where it goes, right? Why not, it takes an extra five seconds. Minus, minus, whew, just for clarity. Plugging in the zero, cosine of zero is one. So it'll be, it'll, it'll, it'll become a positive, but I'll, I won't skip that step. And then it's e to the zero, which is one. Cosine of zero is one, and then plus zero, because sine of zero is zero. Let me just go over that again, just to make sure it's good. So we plugged in pi, we got e to the negative s pi, cosine of pi is negative one, boom, it became positive. We plugged in pi here, sine of pi is zero, so this term vanishes, that's the word they use in math books, in old math books, the term vanishes, it means it goes to zero, it's zero. Minus, plug in zero, cosine of zero is one, so we get this. Plug in zero here, sine of zero is zero. Where does the mm -hmm. e to the negative s pi go? It's still here. No, so, oh, it's zero. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, uh, oh, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. This is what you'll do. Uh, this is ridiculous. This problem is ridiculous. E to the negative s pi plus, yeah, what's that? Yeah, you are. So this is, this is, this is so weird. I know, I messed up yesterday or Monday with the, with the e to the t. Yes? Me forget. <laughs> Where? No, so the, the negative s over s squared plus one plus zero, <clears throat> if it's zero, the e to the t would become one. E to the negative s t. Since t is zero at all. You really see it? You, you know, you, that was my question. Oh, really? Yeah. I thought your t was a pi with a t in the other equation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. It makes sense? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's the answer. This is it. This is the answer. We're done. Oh, my God, right? Wow. We finished. We did it. Oh. What a problem, I'm sweating, like this is like <laughs> insane, insane problem, insane problem. I think this is the neatest solution I've ever done in class. I was trying to be really neat. Um, any questions on this problem, this beautiful problem? So uh, just, just amazing. This is the worst one in the homework. So if we wanted to find the Laplace transform of cosine, we would just take our i, and then instead of going zero to pi, it would be zero to infinity? Yeah, 
Yes, everyone hear what Kyle said? It was a really good question. If you wanted to like find the Laplace transform of cosine without using a table or a Wolfram Alpha, um, you would just go from zero to infinity here, and you would go through this entire process. So then you would just go from zero to infinity here. Yeah, absolutely, good, good question. Yeah, that's the long way to do it. And a lot of uh, engineering books and differential equations books, other ones, they give you the formulas for, um, well, we have the formula for the Laplace of cosine, but they'll give you formulas for this, like a lot of other books. They'll give you formulas for this. Mm -hmm. Like we could have done this one too. That would have been really hard because then we have e to the negative st, e to the at cosine t. Yeah, I think I misspoke earlier. Uh, I was thinking that I said other books give you formulas for cosine. Ours does too, but there's some books that give you formulas for this. We'll, we'll be doing stuff like this later. Uh, there's a trick to do this. You can do it in like 10 seconds using a shift. Once I show you the shifting stuff, it's really cool. It's really easy. It's way easier than this. Uh, this is the hardest stuff. Any questions on this one? Any questions? We're doing really good on time. Um, last semester I was guilty of not doing one that was a little bit different. Um, maybe we should do it. We should do one. I usually don't do it and I think, we, let's make it count. We'll, this will be the last one then we'll do easier stuff. Let's do, yeah, number five or no, number seven. Number seven. Ooh, number eight's really nasty. Number eight is, is this. That's number eight in the homework. Again, you can use Wolfram Alpha if you want uh, to do it that way. Or, or you can do it this way. You don't necessarily have to do all of the homework as it says. You know, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of problems. It's like eight of them or something ridiculous. Uh, yeah, it's eight of them. Let's go ahead and do number um, seven. Let's do number seven. Wait, for seven one homework? Seven one homework. There's about 17 of them. 17. No, but there's eight like this. Uh, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I'm really sorry. I forgot to print the formula sheet again. So I'll write the formulas on the board again at some point. So uh, it's terrible. I keep forgetting. Uh, so number seven, we have to find the Laplace. Number eight? Oh, is it? No, is it? No, number. number eight. No, we're going to do seven. No, eight. This is eight. Okay. Oh, we're not going to do this. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Number seven. F of t is t e to the 8t. e to the 8t. So t e to the 8t. This one requires a, a, a different technique, perhaps, that we should, we should go over. It's just that. So you, could, so you could just plug it into Wolfram, say Laplace of, and it'll give you the answer. When it's piecewise, you probably still can use Wolfram Alpha, but I don't know how. I haven't looked it up. I know it does a lot. It probably does it. It solves PDEs. It's ridiculous. It's like, it's like a pro at math, but it can't do proofs, so it's not, it's not better than us. All right, so, so solution. Yeah. <laughs> not yet. Yeah, no, don't say that. It'll be obsolete. <laughs> like, like. <laughs> it doesn't give out extra credit for a wrong. <laughs> Who does that? I don't make mistakes though. Not anymore. This is it. It's, <laughs> this, I, I didn't mess up on the hardest one. I, yes. One o'clock. Step by step, they creeps me out. It's like so accurate. Oh, okay. yeah. Not this free paper. What the hell? It's free. Yeah, if you pay for the. Uh, oh, if you pay for it. Yeah, you can get like <laughs> step by step guides for uh -oh. exactly how to do it. Oh, that's awesome. I remember the day it came out. Like I remember what I was doing the day Wolfram Alpha came out. I was in a I was in a math chat room. I was talking to someone. This guy's like, "Hey, Wolfram Alpha it just came out. It's released." I'm like, "Oh, because it's from the same company that makes uh, that has MathWorld.com." Isn't it named after Wolfram the mathematician? Oh, I don't know. The, the system of the mathematician. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what it's named after. I don't know. I thought it was. Yeah, I don't know. My parents have it. My dad has his book on. It. Oh, maybe it probably is. Yeah. Why? Yeah. <laughs> So basically we replace, I skipped a step here, I'm sorry. This is this. I skipped a step because we were talking about Wolfram Alpha and I got distracted. So that's your F, right? That's your F. Yeah, Ryan? Can you combine it? Yeah. <coughs> Boom, let's do it. Yeah, Ryan's right. Let's, let's combine this thing. Let's do it. So this is going to be zero to infinity. And I guess how do we combine it? I guess we can, we can let's think about it. It's really this. So I'm tempted to pull out a neg so write it, write it like this maybe, um, negative s minus 8. Is that right? 
you can pull out just a T. I just wanted to pull out, or, or if you prefer, we can write it like this. Um, we can write it like this, negative S plus 8 T. I don't know what's easier. Which one do you all think is easier, the, the first one? Or this, this, you want to use this one? Okay, let's, let's go with this one then. Okay, let's do that. Yeah, let's do it. We got this. We can do it. Okay, so this is going to be E, parentheses, negative S plus 8, T. Okay, that's combining these. And then we're left with a, what's left? T. T, yeah, T. This is a good test question. This is a good one for the test. The one before we just did, don't worry about it. I'm not going to put that on your test. That's just wrong. Um, <laughs> you only have 75 minutes for the test. So, I mean, I could, but then I have to like tone down the test. All right, you have three questions, guys. No. <laughs> uh, no, the fourth will be part take home, though, the fourth test. Yeah, also, I don't know if you heard about the, the virus thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, uh, so they, they say that um, if, if it comes, they'll close the school and it'll be, on, it'll be online classes. So this class will become online. So basically that means it's going to be really easy, I think. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'll just do all the homework for you, make videos. It's, it, won't, it won't be hard. Don't worry. I have to like, because what, what if you get sick? I have to be extra accommodating. Um, all right. Oh, how do we integrate this? What technique do we use? Tabular, yes, tabulate it. It's a verb now. So, so T, <laughs> T, and then you just different. Yeah. How, how do you know when to use tabular or merging with arms? Good, good question. So basically, Austin, if you have something like this or something like this or something like this. These are the class, there's more examples, but these are the classic examples of tabular. So you have t to a power, t to a power, t to a power, and you have an exponential or a sine or a cosine. Yeah, because these, these are eventually zero when you differentiate. But in the previous example, Austin, we had, we had an e and we had both, and none of them are zero eventually when you differentiate. So one of the pieces has to be eventually zero. Good question. That's worth it. It's worth asking. Okay, so let's use tabular on this piece here. So I'm going to erase this. Can I erase it? Yeah, yeah. It's gone. All right. One, zero. <laughs> so just differentiating, right? Differentiating. So we get one, zero. And then the other one, we have to do what with it? Divide by the, divide by the yeah, divide by, the, divide by this. We're going to integrate it. Yep, absolutely. So this is going to be E negative S plus 8T. Then you divide by this. Negative, ah, falling apart. I was thinking about something else. Negative s plus 8 e to the negative s, <sighs> negative s plus 8t. That's some water. <sighs> we do it again. When we do it again, what happens to it on the bottom? It becomes what? Squared. Squared. Very good. So it's 1 over negative s plus 8 squared. And then we have e. Wow, ridiculous. I usually do it this way, so I'm having a little bit more difficulty doing it a new way. So it's like just throwing me off a little bit, which is good. It's good to do different stuff. It builds your, your mathematical maturity. That's what, that's what the name people give it. Like the more math you do, the better you get at it. It doesn't matter what math it is. It's like if you took 20 math classes and you got all C's, you'll be better than you are now. What do we start with, a plus or a minus? Plus. 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 Yeah, then we just draw arrows, yeah, 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 let's follow the arrows, I'm going to go ahead and write the Laplace again to make it seem fancy, Laplace of T, E, so Wolfram is a guy, Kyle, is a person? Yeah, it's a mathematician. Okay, uh, I should look it up, I'm curious. Maybe a systems mathematician, but I don't know, I don't yeah. know we'll stick it there, but he has several books, cool. I have his name on the binders. I'll check it out. As soon as I get out of here, I'm going to go look. I'm curious now. I mean, I looked up the S. So. <laughs> Follow these. So we get T, T over negative S plus 8, E to the negative S plus 8, T, like that. Right? Just following, following these here. Okay. I know it's a lot. It's a lot. It's tough. This is really tough. And then the next one's going to be a minus. So minus 
minus 1 over and then negative s plus 8 squared uh, e to the negative s plus 8 t. Okay, and then we're going from 0 to infinity. So I, I'm out of room here, and you probably are too, so I won't be lazy. I'll just put a 0 to infinity, and I'll show it like another full extra step. A lot of people skip steps. You're welcome to skip steps. It's fine. Um, I won't do it. I'll show, I'll show all the work. Please, no, please don't plug in infinity. Okay. You, can step, you can skip steps and put zeros, but don't, don't, never put infinity in. That's, you're not supposed to do that. I know some people do it, but it's not correct. So. A lot of physics people do it and stuff. It's, it's, yeah. So like you take points off of the... Plug in infinity? Yeah, a couple points. Yeah, like three or four. Like two. No, three or four. Yeah, just please don't plug in. I'll write some comments. Like, you know, it's like, it's wrong. I have to like... Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the infinity is going to become a B. So this is going to have a limit on the outside. And I'll, I'll go ahead and show the step. I'm not going to skip any steps. I'm just going to write everything down again. Uh, I'm going to go slow. So we have this. We have this negative s plus 8 t minus 1 over negative s plus 8 squared e to the negative s plus 8 t and we're going from 0 to b. So I just basically did a lot of extra work here. Uh, just rewrote everything. Bless you. All right, so we are here. So now we just have to plug stuff in, okay? And just be really careful when you plug stuff in. So we have to plug in the B first. And where do you plug it in? In the S or in the T? In the T, yeah, in the T. And be really careful. You, I know last time I made like three mistakes last time. It's really easy to mess up. I'm surprised I haven't messed up today. This is the limit as B goes to infinity. Uh, and then we'll plug in the b for all the t's. So it'll be little b over negative s plus 8. And then it'll be e to the negative s plus 8 times little b. I'm just putting little b's where all the t's are. Um, minus 1 over negative s plus 8 squared. Okay. And then it's going to be e negative s plus 8, s plus 8, b, oh, minus parentheses. I'm going to put a bracket here just to really emphasize what's, what's happening. Now we're plugging in 0. Oh, this is convenient. When you put a 0 here, it goes away because the t is 0. That's really good. So 0. And then the last piece, e to the 0 was 1. So, so we're just going to get negative. You know, when we're done with this problem, if you want, I'll show you how to do it in like 10 seconds. It's like cheating. It's not something you're supposed to learn yet, but I can show you anyways. I'll show you. It's really cool. It's powerful. It's a shifting power. And I'm missing a parentheses. All right. So... This, this is going to be the answer. All of these are going to be zero. So let's go ahead and talk about uh, why each of these will be zero. Okay. But first, any questions on the steps? Are all the steps clear? Everyone see where everything came from? I'm going to go over it again maybe or no questions? Yeah. Yeah, Ryan. Yeah, so let's go through it. So like, let's just focus on this one, for example. So let's explain. So both of these are zero. This is, yeah, this is going to be zero and this is going to be zero. So here's why. So here's the, here's the reason. Let's say, let's just focus on this one. Say we have limit b goes to infinity and it's b over negative s plus 8 e to the negative s plus b plus 8. This is, this, now I remember now, I remember now why I wanted to do it this way or why I do it this way. I remember now why. Because if you do it this way, this next step is easier to understand. If you do it this way, it's a little bit harder to understand. So basically, you want this to be zero, so you want this to be on the bottom. So yeah, so you, you put the E on the bottom. This is really important for the test. So this is B over, I'm going to write this, well, I'll leave it like that, negative S plus 8, 
times 1 over, and then it's going to be e to the negative, negative s plus 8 b. Okay, so you want this to be 0. So I'm going to go ahead and write it. Um, I guess you could distribute the negative if you want. I'll, I'll, I'll do that just for some extra clarity. It's not necessary to do that, but again, just for clarity. Uh, this will be 1 over e, this will be s minus 8b. You see, if you use this one, when you bring it down, it becomes s plus 8, so it's really clean. Okay, so, so if you use this one, when you bring this down, it becomes 1 over e, s plus 8t. You see, immediately, you have the nice s plus 8, so it's like rigged. So this makes it harder to understand. Okay, so you want this to be 0. That means this has to get really big, which it does because b is going to infinity. But that's only going to work if this whole thing is positive. Well, b is already positive because b is going to infinity. So it means you need s minus 8 to be positive. So you need s to be bigger than 8. So in order to figure this out when you're taking a test, because you'll need to write this at the end, um, just look here. Bring it down and then just set this piece greater than zero and you can solve for it every time. Yeah, Ryan? No, since we have an infinity on the top, doesn't that mean that the bottom of infinity has to grow larger? It, the yes, thank you. Yes, he's right. Ryan's right and I forgot to say that. Yes. So basically you have infinity over infinity. Thank you, Ryan. I didn't mention that. You have infinity over infinity and polynomials grow slower than exponentials. Mm -hmm. In general, just for fun, this is really useful. I don't know if you know this. For, for, n, for big N, this is really useful like for life, especially if you're doing like computer science. For big N, uh, what grows the fastest that I know of? Oh, uh, N to the N grows faster than most things I know, and that grows faster than N factorial, and that grows faster than exponentials, and that grows faster than polynomials, and that grows faster than logs. This is super useful, not in the book. It's useful for Calc 2, which you've already taken, unfortunately, or, or fortunately. But this is like life, super useful, right? Because then you can just take limits all day long. So because n, because this is b, it's like your n, this doesn't grow as fast as the exponential, so it's 0. So like if you had, just for fun, I hate to derail so much, but like if you had like 2 to the n over n factorial, this would be 0, because n factorial grows faster than 2 to the n. So kind of a really useful to know that. Like some people, it's just good to just know. Anyways, let's go back to this problem. So any, any questions on the, on the S bigger than 8? Yes, Austin? Um, where are you getting that three sets of? This? Yeah, all three of them. Oh, I just got this from here. I just got this from here, from this piece. Yeah. And then, the one. Hmm? The other two. what other two? This? Yeah. Oh, I just brought it down. When you bring this piece down, it becomes negative, you see? Oh. Yeah, and then you distribute it and you get this. Oh. And then you want it to be 0, so you just take s minus 8 and you set it greater than 0. You just got to know to make it negative. Yeah, know to bring it down. So like, let's say, Austin, let's say that you had, uh, I'm going to ignore the s's just for simplicity. Say you had e to the negative s minus 2b, right? Then, you, then you, what you would do is you would write it like this. Yeah, you bring it down and it becomes positive, good. And then you take the s minus 2, and you set it greater than 0. So s is bigger than 2. Worth it, worth it, yeah. So every time we have a limit to infinity, let's assume that it's going to be 0. Yeah, always. It should always be 0. If you don't get 0, you know you did it wrong. Absolutely. Yep. Mm -hmm. And you'll always, and it'll, uh, this will always happen uh, on these problems. Not always. Actually, there was one last time where it didn't. There was no limit. It was like the ones you were saying. So let's finish. This is going to be 0 minus 0 plus 1 over negative s plus 8 squared. It's on the test. You can just put 0 and 0 here. It's, it's cool. You can just do that. And then somewhere on the side, you know, you figure out what it is. So this is going to be 1 over. I'll leave it like this. You can totally rewrite it in a much prettier way, uh, but I'll just leave it like this. I'll show you how to rewrite it in a minute. And that would be the final answer. This is the answer to the question. A lot of useful stuff here. This is really useful. Yeah, Aislinn? So, is there really a point with finding the s earlier, like you did with, with the, when you set the exponent greater than zero, if at the very end you could also assume that it can't be 
Yeah, yeah, you could, as long as, you, yeah, you could just do that. Yeah, whatever works. If you just look at it and do it, go for it. Mm hmm. Do you, see how, do you see how it works, though? Yeah. Yeah. I understand how it works. It's just, just like. Do you see why though now we have, oh, because they want the limit to exist, yeah, good. Yeah, because otherwise the limit won't exist. On some of them you can't do it though, like on some of the problems it doesn't come up, so you just don't worry about it. Also, this will, this will only be required, or I'll only ask for it, you should only try to do it when it says to do this using the definition, which is what we're doing, we're using the Laplace transform using the definition. On the easier ones, which we're about to do in a minute, um, don't worry about it, right, who cares? Even if they do it in the homework, who cares? Just Because this, here you get to see where it comes from. Okay, any other questions? Yeah. Can you explain what happened to the um, E on the other side of that answer? Here, this? On the answer. This? On the answer. On the answer. This? On the answer. This? Yes. What E? That would normally be there coming from. Never mind, I see what we're at. Okay. Good. <laughs> it's good. No, ask. It's worth it. It's good. It's your life. In 20 years, you won't be in this class. Make it count. I remember my DE class. <laughs> Memories. Any, any questions? I wanted to have a pizza party and the teacher said no. That's what I, that's what I remember. I asked him, I thought he was going to say yes, because he was really big. It's really bad. I know. But... Yeah, totally. Yeah, I'm, I'm down. Yeah. People would make fun of him when he would turn around and be like, oh, like it was really bad. Yeah. This is almost 0% Laplace transform. The only part that was was shoving into E to make the rest of E, and the rest is just different. It's just integration. Yeah, it's just it's just calc it's just really hard calc two. It's harder than calc two. Yeah. Sorry, did I hear we're having a pizza we can. We'll figure it out later. Do you want to? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. When, when you, oh, you know what we could do? I have an idea. Hold on. Let's, let's find out. Let's find out. Let's see. So I have the syllabus here. So maybe we could do it like. Uh, I'll come anyways. No, I'm kidding. Oh, I'll come. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Huh? Pizza. Yeah, yeah, no. It's an online pizza party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're all eating pizza, like blogging, like vlogging. Hey guys, <laughs> good morning. <laughs> so weird. Uh, yeah, we can figure it out. I was thinking like we could do it on a day where there's like a review for a test. You know, like, because we'll probably have a review for one of the tests, but someone has to organize it besides me. So, or I can help. I can bring like a couple pizzas and we'll figure it out. I was thinking we can either do it before, oh, we have a well. We have a review for the final. That day is going to be intense. I don't know if you're going to want to be eating pizza that day, but we could. We could do it on the day for the review for the final. We could do it on the test. We could do it on test day. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what if you get into like a food coma, like sugar crash, like oh, I got grease on my prop, my pen. You can't wash your hands. Someone used all the paper towels. Like I don't know. <laughs> I'd transcribe how to do Laplace transforms with pepperonis. <laughs> <laughs> Make a little infinity symbols with pepperonis. Maybe we can do it on the, on the day for the review for the final, because that's on the syllabus. That sounds good. I'll bring a couple pizzas in. Yeah, that's not, doesn't that sound good? I mean, my night class has, they, they're probably going to want to do one too. They don't have a review for their final. It's sad. Um, no, I know, right? <laughs> Suckers. No, no, that's so bad. That's <laughs> so bad. No. I see him tonight. No. This, yeah, it's really it's pretty recorded. Uh, uh, do you want to see the shortcut way to do this really quick? Yeah, let's do it. So another way. And again, you're not expected to know how to do it this way yet. This is like 7.3. We're not here yet. But if you recall, we had this formula. Uh, 1 over s minus a. So we have that. I'll write all those down in a minute and then we'll do some, we'll actually do more problems today. We're going to do some problems from the worksheet, some harder homework problems. The homework is really easy in this section. It's too easy, unfortunately. Um, so if we have to find the Laplace of, let's say, t, was it t e to the 8t? Oh, this is not the formula we need. I'm sorry. We need this one. I failed. Fail. That's the formula we want. So it's if you have the Laplace of t to a power, it's always whatever factorial is here, it's one higher. And I'm sorry, I forgot to bring the formula sheets in. So I'll write all the formulas again on the board. And, I, hmm? and factorial over, and then it's one higher, n plus one. I'll, I'll try to bring them in next time. I keep forgetting. I'm just really lazy. It's bad. So what we're going to do in this problem is use something really high level that 
we haven't really talked about, and honestly, we haven't done enough examples to where you'll feel comfortable with this, but it's okay. It's all right, it's good to feel uncomfortable sometimes. So here's the thing. Whenever you have an E, you can get rid of it. And you can replace it with a shift. So what you do is you draw a line, you put an S, and S gets shifted, and basically it's gonna be S minus whatever is here. So S minus eight. I'll do a couple examples to show you. This is called the first translation theorem. This is later, not, not today, next week probably. So whenever you have something here, just when, and an E, you can drop it and you can do that. And so now you just find the Laplace transform of T. Well, there's a one here, so it's just gonna be one factorial over S squared. And then you keep your shift. I like to show all the steps. People always skip steps, that's fine. You can skip steps, most people do. I never do. I like to show all the work. And then you just plug in the S minus eight and that's the answer. That's it. Let me go over it again. So whenever you have an exponential like this, you can drop it and replace it with a shift, always. Okay, so the S turns into S minus eight. This is like, these are like the harder, more advanced ones we haven't done yet. This is a big theorem. So is that S prime? No, that's a, that's a one. Okay. That's a one, that's a, here, there we go. Now it's a majestic one. one. Put all the little symbols on it. <laughs> and that's one over S squared and then and you get that. Yeah, so you just replace S with S minus eight and then just plug it in. That's the same thing we had before, yeah. We're using both of those, right? We're using, we're not, we're not using this one at all, I'm sorry. I wrote it down and I thought we were gonna use it but we didn't need it. We're only using this one. Wait, so how do we know we to do that? You can always do that. So like if I have, say I have, say I have Laplace of t squared, e to the negative three t. And this would be Laplace of t squared. This is just a trick. And then it goes s, and then it's s minus whatever is here, but it's already minus, so what do you think it'll be? Plus. Plus. You can always do that. Again, this is, this is later. And then, and then you would get two factorial, and it's one higher on the bottom, always one higher on the bottom. That's the formula, right? The formula says it's the factorial, and it's one higher. Oh, and then we have the shift. And then we have two factorial is two, and then we have this. Again, this is later. The formula, I should give you the formula. If you have the Laplace of anything times e to the at, you can replace, you can drop the e and replace it with a shift all day long. This is called the first translation theorem. Okay, so, yeah. Yeah, and like it would be these. Yeah, if you look at the old test, it says find the following using any method. It's these. Yeah, you can use the table though. Yeah, you still. Yeah, I mean you still have the table for this. If it says use the table, that means that they're easier. Yeah. I'm not sure if I wrote it wrong last time. Mm -hmm. um, I wrote down we got one over negative s. Thank you. So good, uh, Nick. Nick. So Nick is pointing out that the answer before was this. So how is it the same? Ha! Ah, check it out. I was gonna show you earlier, but I was feeling lazy and I thought, oh, I'll just show you now because someone will ask and someone did. So this is equal to, so this is equal to, watch this, I'm gonna pull out a negative one. Who does that? We do. Ridiculous, right? Let me just check that out. Ah, negative one times s is negative s. Negative one times negative eight is positive eight. And then you square each piece. Clever, right? You see how I pulled out the negative? It's really clever. If you have, also if you have like, so if you have something like this, you can immediately write it like this, which is what we have here. Because it's squared. You can do that with absolute value too. The absolute value of x minus y is equal to the absolute value of y minus x. Because the distance between x and y is the same as the distance between y and x. That's, a, that's another way of thinking about it. Yeah, really powerful stuff. Math tricks that you learn. So, 
I thought about that immediately when we got the answer because I knew, I was like, oh, I can do this in my head. Let me check the answer. And I go, oh, wait, it's different. And I thought, oh, no, you can do this. So, so you can check your work a lot of times once you know more stuff. So we'll go over this later. For now, let's, um, we'll, we'll do more of these later. For now, any questions for now? Any questions? All right, I'm going to write the formulas down briefly uh, and, uh, or at least as we go through the problems, I'll write them down. Let's do some problems from the worksheet. Let's do number two, par, uh, two, two A, I guess. This is from the worksheet that's on WebAssign. Two A. This is just like a fun, easy warm-up problem. Two A. So we have. Oh, I can't. I can't believe we're having a pizza party. It's so exciting. <laughs> So excited! I don't know why. It's convenient for me because this is my first class, so I can pick up some pizzas on the way here, and we'll we, we'll figure it out. We'll make like a list. People can bring stuff in, and you know. Uh, a pizza party in your oh, totally! I've had classes where we had a pizza party before every single test. Yeah, and the school used to pay for it, but there was like budget. Yeah, there was like yeah, I know, I know, right? Got the hookup. Ah. These, we used to have embedded tutors, and we had money for pizza parties before every test. And it was awesome, but then the pizza ended, I guess, because budget and yeah. But it was it was fun. It's good. We had a potluck in the summer. I think that was the summer in my pre-calc trig class. That was fun. We had pizza and like all kinds of food, Honduran food and salad and all kinds of brownies and cookies. Way too many cookies. <laughs> Huh? Never too, many Never too many cookies. I know I had cookies and milk last night and the night before. I need to stop. <laughs> so, the chocolate chip ones. So the formula here. So I don't know if you remember. These, this is what we need for this problem. The Laplace of one. Do you remember what that was? One over, one over s. Yeah. This one always plagues me a little bit because multiple semesters I've been grading the test and I get to the end and I do the, like, the last hardest differential equation and I forget this. I'm like, oh. And I feel shame to have to look at the formula sheet because I should know it. And then this one is n factorial and it's one higher on the bottom. So basically we're going to use these formulas to do this. Yeah? So now if it was zero, like the Laplace of zero, would that also be one over s? Yes. No. Uh, Laplace of zero is zero. Laplace of zero is zero. Do you remember why? When we yeah, okay, because you can show it. You can integrate it and you get zero. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's do it. Just basically take the Laplace of each piece. So it's the Laplace of one, and I'll write it out. I know it's easy, but why not? I get to write the L multiple times, so it's worth it. Plus Laplace of T squared plus Laplace of T cubed. How beautiful is that? Plus Laplace. You know, I bet, I bet he never thought Laplace that we would be saying his name, right? I mean, hundreds of years from his death, his name is being like mentioned. No, Laplace, Laplace. Every time we write the letter L, that was like his, you know. It's pretty cool. It'd be like someone saying that your last name every single time. Like, like what's your last name? My last name is put in every bookstore across America. Sellers? Yeah. Yeah, so sellers, like, so like the sellers function, the sellers function, the sell, wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> the sellers of one, the sellers of two, like, it's pretty, it's pretty epic. So Laplace of one is one over s. This is a one factorial, right? So it'll just be one, but I'll write it, one factorial. What would go on the bottom in this case? S squared, good isn't, it's always one higher on the bottom, plus, plus. And then 2 factorial, and you can simplify it, and we will. s cubed plus 3 factorial s to the fourth plus 4 factorial s to the fifth plus 5 factorial s to the sixth. Okay, you can skip steps. I overdo it and I show multiple steps. Why? I don't know. Um, I think when you get to the shifting stuff, the notation is really important, so that's I'm just a habit. It's 1 over s plus 1 factorial is 1, so it's just going to be one, 1 over s squared. 2 factorial is 2 because it's 2 times 1, so 2 over s cubed. What's 3 factorial? Do you all know? 6. 6, yeah. So it's 6 over s to the 4 because it's 3 times 2 times 1, right? 4 factorial is 24 over s to the 5. Hey! 
5 factorial is 120. Mm -hmm. 120. 5 factorial is the number of ways to line up 5 people. Right? If, you have, if you have 5 people at a store, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and they're all trying to buy milk at 2 a.m., there's one cashier, there's 5 ways to pick the first person in line. Once you pick the first person in line, there's 4 ways left to pick the next person, then 3 ways to pick the next person, 2 ways to pick the next person, and 1 way to pick the last person in line. And the product is the number of ways to pick all those people. There's 120 ways to line up 5 people at Walmart who are trying to buy milk. You do that same math statistically every time you shuffle a deck of cards that is a new combination. Yeah, combinations. Yeah, oh, it's ridiculous. Fifty-two factorial, right? Uh, yeah, uh, no, it'd be no. It's fifty-two choose five. You see, because here the order matters. When you're taking the cards, the order doesn't matter. So it's a, it's called the combination. Uh, it's a it's, it's a selection without regard to order. Because check it out. If you take five cards, right, and you get three aces and two sevens. Say you get ace, 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 seven, seven. But when you shuffle it up, cards, the order does matter. No, but when you're drawing them, it doesn't. Check it out. Say you draw five cards, right? And you get three aces and two sevens. So you get ace, 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 seven, seven. So you have three aces and two sevens. Say instead you get seven, seven, ace, ace, ace. Did it matter which one you picked up first? Like, did it matter if you picked the aces first or the sevens first? No. No, so that's why the order, that's why it's combinations. It's, it's, it's hard for people. Yeah. Did they teach this to us in Calc 2, like, as a series? Like, this? You, you see this in Calc 2 and Power Series, which we'll do. We're going to review all of the Calc 2 Power Series in this class. All of it. We're going to review all of the series tests, except the worst one. What's the worst series test, in your opinion? No, no, no the, the test, like a convergence test. What's the worst one? The one you hate the most? Really? Yeah. No, it's not, it's not the integral test. We're not going to do that one because I don't like it. But we'll do the other ones. <laughs> it's got an integral. No. <laughs> We're already doing enough integrals. No, we'll do. I know, thank you. Extra credit, Duncan. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah, I know. Nothing I say is meaningful. Let's do. No, I don't think I said that. G, 2G. So are we having this pizza party or not? Yeah, we are. We are. We'll do it. Well, just keep. You gotta pressure me, okay? <laughs> like, uh, okay. Because <laughs> I will forget completely. That that's a, that's a little G. Yeah. What does it look like? Or no? Is it? A large guy. <laughs> okay. No. No. It's a little G. Here we go. Little. Little. Oh. Oh, okay. Just. <laughs> <laughs> If you do this in okay, it doesn't matter. So this is. <laughs> Sorry, this one's tough. This is. I don't even know if this is in the homework. It might be. Sine three t is pretty tough. I got these from some other books. Because I figured you'd be doing these again in other classes, so it's good to like get exposed to some harder ones. That's why you have the worksheet, more practice. So this is something you'll probably definitely see on an exam, like for sure. Okay. So there's an identity we have to use for this. Uh, first of all. The identity is sine, I'll use x, 2x is 2 sine x cosine x. So this is one of the trig identities you want to know uh, for the test. So it's one of the few that you'll want to know. So sine 2x is 2 sine x cosine x. The other identities that you'll want to know are the ones for cosine squared and the ones for sine squared. This one once, pre-calc. Uh, this, yeah, yeah, it's going to be 1 plus, cosine has the plus, 2x over 2, and then sine has the, the minus, yeah. You, you, I guess you learn these in trig, but not really. It's cosine. It's oh, yeah, it's cosine. Oh, my God, I can't believe I did that. Thanks. So it's a triple point. Yeah. Oh, my God, no! No, it was Aislinn, though, right? Was it? Uh, I, think it, I, no, I think it was, it was, it was. Hey, I, can, can I see your pen? I, I only heard Aislinn. Well, because he said 2. Did he really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he did? He said 2, he said over 2, and he said cosine. Oh, okay. All right, the whole class then. <laughs> I don't want to write two names down. Here you go. Thank you. Oh, all right, whole class has 3. It's good, it's good. It's good. It's all right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so... Let's, so if you rewrite this, if you rewrite this, you get, you get sine x cosine x equals one half. I can't believe I made that mistake. That's a, that's a bad mistake. That's worth it. Good, good job. So here, the, the x 
is actually 3t. So if you plug in 3t for x, you get 2 times 3t. So what would you get? 6t. 6t. We're okay with that because, I mean, let me show the work here. If you have sine x, cosine x, just to show the work, equals 1 half sine 2x. If you replace x with 3t, you get sine 3t, cosine 3t, and this is 1 half sine 2 times 3t, and then 2 times 3t is 6t. Okay, let's just show all the work, having a flashback here, major flashback. One of the first YouTube videos I ever made, I did this step and this guy gave me a negative comment. <laughs> about the 2 times 3t. He's like, what are you, an idiot? 2 times 3t is 6t. You don't have to show that step or something. He had like spiky hair. I remember. Just, I'm used to the negative comments now, but I remember. And that, he said it was easy, but I still think it's kind of tricky. So, The formula for sine, let me write them both down. So if you remember the formula for cosine kt and the formula for sine kt, this was from last time. Do you remember the trick with cosine? Cosine has the, do you remember? Uh, the, yeah, cosine has the S. Good, Mike. Cosine has the S up top, and sine has the K. Very deceptive trick. Very what? What's the word? Deceptive. De yeah. Deceptive, yeah. Because like, I think of By cosine, yeah, like the K. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I guess so. Oh, that's really confusing. Oh, my God, you're right. Cosine has the K. No, it's wrong. No, no, no. I'm going to mess up now. So cosine has the S. Yes. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Oh, my God. I never thought of that, Duncan. Okay, so cosine has the S. So sine has the K. What's the K in this case? Six. Six. Good. That's the KT. Good. That's, that, that's six. That's the, that's the K. Whew. S squared plus, I'm going to show the steps, six squared. You just carry the one half through. Yeah, you can actually cancel it with a six. That's even better, right? Because then I'll give like through, through the actual, like the, uh -huh. the intro. Right? Yeah, yeah, because you can pull it out. And, mm -hmm. Yep, and that's it. That's the final answer. That's it. Easy. We should do more. Yeah. And the one in the box there, that's one of the ones that's going to be on the uh... test? Yeah. Yeah, these two. All, yeah, mm -hmm. these. All of them. Mm -hmm. That's why that was well earned points, because that's it. I mean, I can't believe I put a sign there. I just, I don't know. It's weak. Let's do another one. Let's do two. Um, oh, wow. What's, oh. Let's do J. 2J. 2J. Like the restaurant. No, that's not. That's, t, that's 2J. J. That's a J. <clears throat> what's that? Yeah, really? Yeah, I've, I've, I've never been there. Uh, 2J. Is it 2Js? Yeah. 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 I've eaten there from here, here. Like, I have had free food from 2Js here, like, at events and stuff. Okay. All right. Good stuff. So, the reason I wanted to do this one is because we're running out of time, and this lets me introduce two things that you should also know for the test. So, it's the hyperbolic functions. You should know the definitions. So, recall that the hyperbolic cosine is the average of e to the t and e to the negative t. So, you add them up and divide by 2. And the hyperbolic sine is half the difference. So, it's cinch, eight, cinch t. It's e to the t minus e to the negative t over 2. So the strategy in this problem, one strategy in this problem, is to rewrite it using these. However, we're teaching it, like I'm showing you how to do it now. Later on, when you learn the translation theorem, you can do the shift also. So you can avoid all of this. So you don't even have to do it this way. Uh, sometimes on the test, people do it with the shift. I'm like, whoa. So it's two similar answers. They're the same. They just look different. So let's just go ahead and do it the long way. We'll just replace. Uh, cinch with the definition. So this is going to be the Laplace of e to the 2t. And then instead of, we have 6t, so this will be e to the 6t. So e to the 6t minus e to the negative 6t 
all over two parentheses, and then we have that there. And then you can pull the one half out and distribute the e. When you distribute the e, you end up adding the exponents. So this will be one half, I'm gonna skip all the steps. Laplace, when you multiply these, you get e to the eight t, because two t plus six t is eight t, minus one half Laplace, Right, because now we get the minus and the one half come out. And then when you add these, you get e to the negative 4t. So I skipped some major steps here. Um, I mean, I don't know if they're major, but basically uh, you have something like this. I don't know why I'm showing this extra work. Guilt. <sighs> this is where I mess up. And then you distribute and then you break it up. Okay. Maybe that, so that's, that's how that, and then distribute and then break it up into two, into two Laplace. You can pull numbers out. Okay, the formula for this one, which I had earlier on the board, I wrote it down and we didn't even use it. So the Laplace of e to the at is one over s minus a. Again, the formula sheet's on WebAssign under resources. You can use it on the test. And so now we just apply the formula in both cases. So this is one half, one over s minus eight minus one half, one over s uh, plus four. If you look on the answers in the worksheet, it'll have a different answer. That's because it's a Wolfram Alpha answer. Wolfram Alpha will combine these and write it as a single fraction. So it looks different, but this, this is correct as well. So, forty-five seconds. Any questions on this one? You could, mm -hmm. yeah, not now, but it would be interesting to see it with the shift. You want to see it really quickly? Sure. I'll do it really fast, the shift, really? Yep. Really? Okay. I was thinking about it, I'm like, we're running out of time, and I have to go get some food, but check it out, check it out, check it out. So what you do is you drop the E, right, you drop the E, I've never done it with the shift in class, ever, first time, and then cinch, cinch has the K, so it's six, and cinch is minus, and you have the shift. And then you replace it, so you get six over. And apparently, this is the same answer. Oh, it's not K, it's six. Wow, wow, fail. And apparently, that's the same answer. So if you add these up, and you do some math, theoretically, it's the same, it's the same thing. If I do that right, I did that so fast. Yep, yep. Yeah, it looks good. Has the K, S squared, yep, looks good. What do you mean? Oh, like, yeah, you can do it like this, the shift. <laughs> yeah, but other than that, no. So that's it. Next time when you come in, we'll do more problems. So that's it. Let's do more. We'll do a lot more examples next time. Everything will be shorter next time. We'll do some partial fraction stuff and stuff like that. Huh? Yeah, yeah, we're using tables now. That's all we're using now. Yeah, we're not going to be doing the definition stuff again until like the review. When we review.